something else that's also your responsibility is telling your ally what weapon to use because they're not gonna switch away from it at any cost. Literally, I've seen my ally die because they refuse to switch to a more appropriate weapon. Fortunately, switching their weapon is just a click of a key away, as is telling them to stay, to follow you again, and to ask them to help you, although I think I only used that like once. In addition to weapons, you also find these flashlights. Now something pretty cool about this game is if you find a flashlight, some sticky tape, and a projectile weapon of any kind, you can combine the three and wind up, you know, going around with a gun that has a flashlight on top of it. That is something that I have not seen in anywhere near enough games. You can also exert some control over where you point the flashlight, which is pretty cool. There are different strengths of flashlights, and the reason for this is they all have this boost feature, and that helps lessen the enemy's defense or something. They have this black, foggy, smoky stuff around them, and this is removed by boosting the light on them. Unfortunately, you can't tell your ally okay, you just have at him while I boost the crap out of him, or vice versa. Your ally is very nice about covering you when you're solving a puzzle or picking a lock or something, though. And when they just have the right weapon for the situation, their AI tends to be pretty decent. The game is very clearly made so that you really can't complete it unless both are pulling their weight, and your ally almost always is. The characters don't have an awful lot of personality. I would say this is probably because the people making the game were afraid they might alienate players. Unfortunately, they wound up making them too generic. They're flat, kind of stereotypical, and seemingly kind of all in the same situation. I wasn't sure if Josh was part of the popular crowd like the other four seemed to be, but if he wasn't, he never expressed that he wasn't. There's no conflict between them, and there's no real drama. Now, again, this is because they wanted you to be able to switch back and forth between them. If there was actually drama, it might have to result in one of them, you know, walking away, straying from the rest of the group, and then you couldn't choose that character anymore or something, and that went against what they wanted to do. In their defense, they learned the lesson. In the second one, there definitely is drama. The graphics are, of course, dated by today's standards, but they are pretty good. The camera is third person with some interesting angles. This does, however, also mean that you might be firing at something that you can't see at times. As in, they're not in the shot with you. Fortunately, the aiming system is great, so most of your shots will hit. You don't use the mouse to aim, you basically don't use the mouse in this game at all. But when you ready a projectile weapon, it'll immediately lock on to some target and indicate which one, and then there's a key which, when you press it, you can cycle through the different targets. The camera does at times change without you doing anything to cause that, except for, you know, moving around. And since this is unexpected, and the arrow keys send you in the direction they point, as opposed to, like, Silent Hill, for example, turning left and right on the left and right keys, and then either backing up or walking forward. In this, you might actually wind up running in the wrong direction, simply because the camera changed when you didn't expect it to. Similar to Silent Hill for The Room, for example. The plot is pretty good, and there are some great twists. I would have liked some more character development, not just of the five that you control, but in general, but it certainly never loses your attention. There's just not enough background on these characters for us to connect to them, or indeed for them to connect to one another. A minor thing is the fact that all of them have green mouths. I don't know, maybe they had a lot of hard candy and it rubbed off, I don't know. Now, while this does take place at a high school, 
the grounds are huge. I don't know if they mistook it for a college campus or something, but clearly it's too big to just be your average high school. I think there's some hints in the second one that it's a boarding school, but still. The gameplay tends to be fun, although it can be clumsy, as well as frustrating. The monsters are really cool, including ones that are walking on the ceiling outside of the sunshine. The physics in this game need attending to. If you nudge one of those carts that you know cleaning ladies use, it will move an inordinate amount away from you. Seriously, there was a brief period of me playing this game where I actually thought that they were haunted and you know moving on their own. Cycling through your inventory is way too slow and you can essentially only really do it when you're standing still. I shouldn't even have to mention what kind of problems that gets you into. The game really needs a quick heal button. I haven't actually tried the co-op, but apparently if the other player walks off screen, you can switch to their view by pressing a button on the keyboard or something. This really sounds very awkward to me. I honestly have a hard time imagining that that works out well because if one of the players is off the screen, yeah. There are three difficulty settings, so it should challenge any player, regardless of how experienced they are. It is a pretty short game, but there is replayability value. The first time you complete it, you unlock a couple of things, including two punk rock music videos, Sum 41 and Span, a short non-verbal behind-the-scenes production, and some things that entice you to play the game again. There aren't a lot of boss fights, but the ones that there are are really, really cool. If a character does die, what he had on him will drop to where he died, and you can go and pick it up using another character. You can save anywhere you want and at any time, but you do need these discs that you find along the way, so you can't save as many times as you want. The atmosphere is quite good, partially because of the sound side, but it does somewhat feel like it's trying to be Sound Hill, and it's not. It's not Sound Hill, and you can tell that it's trying to be. That's not good. With that said, overall the atmosphere is effective. A very scary game. Well, that was my spoiler for review of the first Obscure game. Now for my spoiler for review of Obscure 2, or Obscure The Aftermath. It is apparently known under both titles. This takes place two years after the events of the first game, and this time it actually does take place at a college. They again go beyond the bounds of that, but this time it's because they move off campus. There's a nice variety to the environments in this. I never got bored of my surroundings in it. Kenny the Jock returns from the first and his ability is now strength, meaning he can push around large objects, Lara Croft style. Stan slash Zeke also returns. This time he's apparently been in jail. He doesn't attend the college. He's like a delivery boy or something. His ability is again lockpicking, and I gotta say, this game has my favorite way of depicting lockpicking ever. And I've played Splinter Cell 1 through 4, okay? And Alias. Okay, bad example. Anyway, best system yet. I can try to explain. Basically, you see the lock from the side, and there are these parts of the mechanism that need to be aligned so that the pick can go from outside the lock all the way through it into, into this little hole at the very end. Some of the mechanisms have several holes, and basically you just have to make sure that they wind up allowing direct passage to the hole at the end you can move them up or down using the pick and you can see how much you can push them up or down but to move let's say you want to move the last one that means you have to get the pick through the holes of the other ones first i hope that gives you an idea of how it is it's just it's really really cool it's a proper puzzle in general the puzzles in this are very intuitive and really really great anyway kenny and stan did not take the events at Leafmore High School well, and they take pills to deal with it. 